My first guest this evening, uh, you may remember as Biff from Back to the Future Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. You may have seen him on The Tonight Show, The David Letterman Show, and on his comedy special, Through the Eyes of a Goat. <laughs> There's a little conversation right there coming up. Tom Wilson, folks, say hi to Tom. <laughs> Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Sit. Good evening. so comfortable. Thank, thank you. <laughs> everyone's, already, everyone's already squinting at me, you know. <laughs> yeah! That's not the guy. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't in the movie. Well, yes, That's he not was him. I rented it. That's not the guy. Under how much makeup were you playing Biff? Uh, under, uh, well, my head was basically a six-hour arts and crafts project um, for men who would uh, glue uh, prosthetic makeup to it. Yeah. So I'm actually uh, going around saying, it was actually me, butthead. You know, that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I went to acting school, wanted to be an actor, went to the uh, American Academy of Dramatic Arts, studied the classics, Shakespeare, Ibsen, you know, stars in my eyes. I come to California, what are you looking at, butthead? <laughs> <laughs> Mom and dad are really proud. You get recognized at all or does the makeup obscure everything for you? Uh, adults think that I went to high school with them somewhere in Nebraska. You know, they're just, I know, but kids are like, Biff, it's Biff, knock me on the head, knock me on the head. <laughs> Hello? Anybody home, Jimmy? Now get out of here. <laughs> That's Biff's house. You know, um, <laughs> he hates kids. I heard he killed one. What was it like uh, working with uh, Crispin Glover? He's so off the wall, isn't he? <laughs> Crispin, everyone's very curious. Well, a lot of people probably remember his Letterman. Crispin, no, Biff. Uh, <laughs> you leave her alone. <laughs> I, yeah, thanks. Oh, oh please, please. <laughs> I mean, he, uh, he, made a, he made a real name for himself on Letterman, too, but he just snapped yeah, on that I'm show, I'm strong. <laughs> I can kick. Well, so what was I, I do Crispin better than I do myself, I think. I'm not sure. But, um, no, Crispin, well, Crispin was not in the, the sequels. Oh, but he was in the first you, one. Yeah, you guys see Back to the Future 2 and 3? Or? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> People in the front, we heard they sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Doubtful as a rental. But, <laughs> but uh, no, Crispin wasn't in either of the sequels. I, you know, ask for too much money, <laughs> you're out of there. You're, you're of gone. You're history. Um, I only wish that I could have been in the car in the first one. You know, I wanted to be <laughs> hanging onto the fender at the end of the movie. I want to be in the sequel. <laughs> but um, no, when they got to my deal, it was great. It was kind of like a Bob Barker pricing game, and the Price is Right. You know, it was like Tom, Crispin asked for too much money. He's not doing it. What were you thinking about making? You have thirty seconds. Duh, duh. <laughs> Da, da, da. Uh, 250, lower. Uh, uh, 150, lower. Uh, uh, 149, 48, 47, 46. Ah, sorry. Goes to Judd Nelson. But we got nice prizes and parting gifts for you, Tom. It was a great experience, though. No, I, uh, it, was, it was fantastic. I just uh, I came from an around the world tour promoting, promoting Back yeah. to the Future. It was amazing. I went to, uh, to Australia, Japan. Uh, Europe. I, I was in Hong Kong. Have you have you been there? No, I haven't. Not I, this I, I, is there an improv there? Because otherwise, the, the Hong Kong improv coming to our stage right now. <laughs> is, uh, a little, little monocle. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone been to Hong Kong here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. It's not not Epcot, sir. This is the real place. <laughs> did Did you get on a monorail and go to Norway right afterwards? It's not the same thing. No, if there were lots of people with big ears on their hats, no, it's not the right place. An amazing place. I mean, I went to Hong Kong. It's an amazing place. You go, um, well, you know, I'm traveling around the world. I don't want to be an ugly American. You know, I don't want to just get off the plane in a loud shirt. Hey, where's the McDonald's? You know, I just, I want to celebrate the culture, you know, get to meet the people. Have them take me to this exotic restaurant, you know, where the local people of Hong Kong go. I, I think they use this restaurant in the deer hunter. I'm not sure, but you know, I really, you know, ceiling fans, skinny dogs running between the tables. You get the picture. No, very, no, it's an exotic place, but no, it's cool. It's cool. I'll celebrate the culture. It's like Chinatown. It is. I feel I'll order a piece of fish. That'll be safe. I, I order a piece of fish from the waiter, you know, and they're all calling me beef the whole time. Beef. <laughs> Uh, people, it's sure not a want... documentary. My name is Tom, all right? What was it on, 60 Minutes? Tom, maybe they were telling you what's on the menu. We have beef, 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 beef. a lot of beef. beef. Sweet and sour, <laughs> barbecue, anything. <laughs> and I gotta knock them on the head, you know? Oh, hello, hello, anybody home? You know? 
So in your effort not to be the ugly American, yeah. So I'm so I'm this piece of the fish. They bring no, I was not hideous <laughs> to the people. Well, I'm, you know, I have to knock them all on the head. The waiter comes over. I try to knock him. He blocks it. Kicks me in the face. You know, because they know that stuff there. But I order a piece of fish. They bring, I swear, they bring a three foot long grouper to the table. Head, tail, everything. Just boom. <laughs> we eat this whole, no utensils, we eat the, I'm still cool. I'm still like Mr. International, you know? Oh, no utensils, fine. Picking at the bones of this fish, you know, at the end of the meal, he looks like a, a Flintstones x-ray. Just, you know, head, <laughs> bones, and a tail. Host of this dinner, the host of this dinner stands up through an interpreter he says, as guest of honor, the interpreter turns to me, as guest of honor, they would like you to eat the head and suck out the eyeballs of the fish. <laughs> I, I'm not, they want me to suck out the eyeballs of this fish. Not this life, okay, no. Maybe if I come back in another life as an eyeball sucking guy, possibly, no, I'm not chewing on aqueous humor for anybody, okay? The, the pressure increases, the inter and they're not letting me off the hook. Go ahead, suck out eyeball, beef. Go ahead. <laughs> He's going to suck an eyeball now. It's nice that's, a, that's a compliment. Hey, he's a very big eyeball sucker, that he guy. He sucks some eyeballs. Oh, can he suck an eyeball? He's so very big. I sucked out the eyeballs of this fish. Oh, no, I did. I oh, did. like you never did that. So I suck out the eyeballs of the fish, and they all go, oh, he did it. Oh, 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 oh. Well, nobody ever did it before. Oh. It's a joke, beef. Oh. Oh, patooey. 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 Patooey, it's, uh, it's actually uh, Esperanto, meaning disgust. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, I'm, I'm happy that some uh, people that only know you as an actor from all the movies you're doing get to know you a little bit as a stand-up comedian, because he's a terrific stand-up comic. Uh, and... Uh, you work with kind of unusual way. You have a tuba with you on stage. Yeah, I play the tuba. I, uh, I a play sousaphone, actually. Sousaphone, the specifically. In the audience, yeah. Sure. <laughs> As you are, a musical purist. I am a musical <laughs> purist. Uh, I, I know it's a sousaphone, although for many years I was calling it, you know, that big thing the guys march with. The metal, yeah. the 40 pound metal thing. Uh, no, I, yeah, I played it in my act. I mean, I, was, uh, I played the tuba all through, uh, you know, high school, junior high in the marching band. <laughs> yeah, he was a geek. Let's get it. <laughs> You know, the tuba play. Every other, you know, musician in the band, they're down in the front of the stands. They get to put down the instrument and watch the game, talk to their friends. The tuba players, way up on the top of the stands every week. Ba, 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 da, ba, 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 da, ba, ba. Just swinging back and forth with those huge things. Swinging back and forth, just trying to dodge all the garbage you people are trying to throw into the thing. Yeah, you too. You're like, yeah, I know. Well, that's right, I got I those people. I got those protective things there. Yeah, it's a... <laughs> Here come the tubas. <laughs> Give me the rest of my hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, lunch for the band. That's right, yeah, we're really, by the third quarter, you'd have like 60 bucks worth of snack foods in the thing, you know? We just kind of turn it, oh, look, jujubes. Hey, they're mine, get off. <laughs> 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 Did you do that in college also? Were you in the uh, marching band? In college? In college? Uh, no. no. Really, in high school, it's excusable. But in college, high you should know better. High school, being a complete wuss or something, <laughs> you should have. Uh... <laughs> no, I, I wasn't. I, um, I went to Arizona State University, uh, majored in. It's the best 700 bucks my dad ever spent, all right? Don't, that's, I can use those three credit hours anytime I want. Went to Arizona State, um, majored in international politics. Uh, Arizona being the hub of international relations. <laughs> and every time, with this whole Gulf thing, I mean, I know James Baker's there. Why don't we, uh, let's call Arizona State on this one. <laughs> Hello, help us. There's a professor there. I think you should nuke them till their shadows glow. <laughs> Well, what was your intention with that? Were you going to become uh, I was going to become a lawyer. I was going to become an international kind of law guy. A guy that checks his watch frequently and has a briefcase, you know, surgically implanted onto his fist. You know, just catch that train, do the whole bit. And then something snap happened. <laughs> I'd rather not discuss it. I... <laughs> well, you're doing real well in your chosen profession. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank and, you. And, Paul, uh, is it? Yeah. Paul. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> What? I don't know, you know. All right, we'll be right back. I'm going to suck the eyes out of Tom's head. And we'll be back with Judy Tome right after this on Comics Only. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Paul. That was great, buddy.
stuff for you to come back with. Oh, yeah.